What's up guys, welcome to Free Dive Passion. So it's been an interesting few dive sessions since the last time we spoke, and I'm gonna use this vlog to talk about that. For those of you that watched the last video, you'll remember that I was progressing nicely throughout the 70s, having really the most beautiful dives that I've ever had, completely relaxed, within the flow state, everything was feeling great. Then when I hit 80, I noticed there was a change and it was a very subtle psychological change. I noticed that my mind was starting to project itself. I was starting to wonder when I would reach a certain point on the dive. And this is just not ideal. Like for me, a dive, in a dive, I should be completely present for the whole thing. There should be no projection, thinking about the future, thinking about when the dive's gonna end. So to counter this problem, I put two things into place. One was visualization. The other was given a greater importance to staying focused on a specific thing during each aspect of my dive. And I have to say, when I repeated 80 and then I increased my depth to 82 and a half, it definitely worked. Like 80, 80 felt much nicer than the first 80, and then 82 and a half felt even nicer than the second 80. So there was a definite increase in relaxation. I was definitely more present and unable to enjoy my diving much more. Being completely absorbed in the present moment didn't leave any space for projection. It didn't leave any space in my mind to start thinking about where I was, how long the dive had, had taken, uh, how, long, how much longer it's gonna take. I was just completely focused on what I was doing in that moment. And this allowed me to enter a very nice flow state and allowed the dive to feel like it happened very quickly, although it happened at the same rate that my dives always happen. So this got me to thinking about why exactly there was this change between the 70s and the 80s. And what I think is that although going through the 70s was PBs for me, and there's always going to be a degree of stress in a PB, I was very, 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 very confident that I could do those dives. And I'd been there before in constant weight, so it, was, it wasn't new territory. And I was sure within myself that I could do the dives. This meant that I could kind of rest on my laurels. So what that this means is not give the dives as much focus or attention as what I normally would for a deep dive or a PB. So what I was kind of doing is just switching off completely, not focusing on anything and letting the, ha the dive just happen like automatically under the flow state. And while there was no stress or very, very little stress during these dives, this relaxation of the mind, allowing the mind to just kind of be free and empty, took it to a very positive place and I was getting just the most amazing feelings. But when I started to reach the 80s, then in my mind, this is a big dive because I haven't been deeper than 80 in constant weight, I haven't been deeper than 80 in free immersion. 80 has the feeling of being kind of like a big deal to me and being unfamiliar territory. So I'd built up this habit of not creating so much focus on my dives and, and letting the mind be free and just kind of letting the dives happen just automatically. Now the problem was with this extra de degree of stress, which I wasn't prepared for, letting my mind be free didn't take it to a positive place. It allowed it to wander into negativity. So, like I said before, projection, wondering where I was, wondering when I would get to a certain point. Obviously, this is bad. Now, like I already mentioned, the cure to this was to up the focus and give a greater importance to my focus. Um, now, what this resulted in was nice dives with flow states and no negativity. But I don't expect to get the same beautiful feelings that I had in the 70s right now in the 80s. And I think this is quite normal when extending your boundaries. So like right now, the 70s feel like a very easy dive to me. The 80s feel challenging. In the future, the 80s will feel like an easy dive and the 90s will feel challenging. And in the past, I can think back to when the 60s felt like an easy dive and the 70s were challenging. I think that's simply the nature of progression in any sport. So that was all good stuff, very positive things. Repeated 82 times, 82 and a half once. Then I wanted to try an 85 meter dive. 
The 82 and a half was so easy that I was very confident going into the 85 meters. But I swallowed my mouth fill, uh, had to turn about 72. That's super rare to me. I literally don't remember the last time I swallowed my mouth fill. So I fucked up pretty big there and it tells me that something's wrong. When you make a mistake in any part of life, all you can do is accept it because it's happened. But you should always try and learn a lesson from that mistake. Something caused a lack of concentration and it doesn't take a genius to realize that it must have had something to do with the depth. I was trying a PB, it's a pretty big dive, 85 meters. So even though I felt okay, I didn't feel like I was stressed or worried about the dive, that must have been a contributing factor. And when I try and think about exactly what I was doing when I swallowed my mouth fill, like whether I was doing individual equalizations or constant equalizations, I honestly can't remember. So that means the focus wasn't where it needed to be. I've noticed in the past that when approaching bigger dives, I've got the habit of using less than perfect technique or start, starting to do silly things due to stress on the dives. I also need to think about the mental strain that the current uh, routine that I'm following has. Right now I'm doing a deep dive, resting, deep dive, rest, deep dive, rest. So out of every three days, I'm doing two deep dives, two PB dives essentially. Um, now this is extremely mentally taxing and it's not giving me any chance to really focus and notice um, some details or some mistakes that I'm starting to make. So I think my programming has something to do with this slow decline in my diving. So to help limit this mental strain and to allow myself more time to work on technique and to notice any bad habits that are forming, I've decided to do one deep day followed by a second sort of shallow repetition stay, working on skills and just trying to notice anything new that's uh, appearing during my diving and then a rest day. This way instead of between three and four deep dives per week, I'll be doing like two deep dives per week which is much more sensible and much more manageable for the depths that I'm doing right now. Psychologically, this means every time I prepare for a dive, it's not going to be like a high stress maximum dive. The majority of my diving is going to be with very little stress, focusing on technique, focusing on relaxation, putting nice things in place. So yesterday I did my repetitions day after messing up my 85 meters the day before that. Today is my rest day and tomorrow I'll try 85 again. If I mess up 85 tomorrow, then that's a sure sign that I'm kind of in over my depth, so to speak. And it's time to take a step back, maybe do a bunch of 80s and then build up really slowly with more repetitions back to 85. So you guys will probably notice over these videos, the main things that I'm talking about are psychological things. And the reason is like free diving when it comes to physical technique is not a very complicated sport. It's not like swimming where your technique needs to be perfect and you need to work on the most tiny details to get a fraction of a second faster. You can get away with not great technique for very deep diving. Um, once you understand mouthfeel and learn mouthfeel, it's a very, very simple technique. Now, the only way that you can mess these things up is if you're stressed out or your mind is in the wrong place. So once you have these skills and you're increasing in your depth, most of the problems that arise are due to some sort of psychological issue, not that the fact that you don't know how to equalize, it's just the fact that you can't equalize under that degree of stress in that situation that you're in. So really, like psychological training becomes more and more and more important the deeper you become. And to learn the lessons that need to be learned, you need to be super present, completely aware of everything that's happening in your own mind and your own body, and then honest enough to say to yourself, okay, like I did this because of this. I, I messed up because I was scared or I messed up because of this. And it's so easy to just say, oh, I just couldn't equalize and then not delve like deeper into the real reason, the real um, cause of that lack of focus that caused you not to not be able to equalize on, or to turn early, for instance. So that's it, that's enough wise words from me for today. Um, tomorrow I'll do my, my 85. I'm sure it's gonna be good. I feel like really confident about it. I'll let you guys know how it's going. And until next time, take it easy and dive safe.